welcome to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another movie review. Yes, we have officially kicked off season four of the throne. So Throne Nation, tune in on a weekly basis moving forward. Officially, when the podcast returns on October 2nd is when things are officially said and done around here on the Movie Throne. That means we're moving forward full stream but you know what i like to watch a couple of movies here and there a little bit earlier post a few videos here and there dabble my feet again and kind of like scrape off or dust off the rust off my own shoulders right so anyways i'm gonna change things a little bit around guys i know usually i do a 50 50 split on the movie reviews and all that stuff but go catch the last one i did i did uh jolt starring kate beckinsale going to tweak it, you know, hope you guys are not annoyed by the music. I'm getting used to it because, like you guys know before, the King lost a whole bunch of crap, but on his laptop and it deleted literally files. I got them somewhere stored, but you know what? I go, King's a creative person. Let's, you know, create some music so I can play in front of the videos for you guys. So it's not totally uh, boring and it's just, you see my beautiful face. But anyways, I'm not here to talk about all that bull crap. You guys know that. I'm here to talk about movie reviews. And it's going to be mostly spoilers, guys. I'm not going to waste my time and spend five minutes on a damn review, like kind of repeating myself twice. Giving you a warning, if you haven't seen any of the films that I talk about, go watch them to come back. But anyways, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Fast 9 or the Fast Saga, Fast and the Furious. It's part nine, guys. You know it stars Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, Jordana Brewster, Ty, uh, Reese Gibson, Ludacris, and a whole bunch of other ones. In this one, we got the addition of Nathalie Emmanuel. She's from Game of Thrones, amazing actress, British actress. We got Charlize Theron's back again in this one. If you've seen the last one, she's been in the last, I think, two or three, if I'm not mistaken. We got John Cena, You Can't See Me in here. You know, so uh, we also got the return of Han. So that's a spoiler, but I don't care. Uh, Sung Kang. You got Helen Mirren. Kurt Russell as Mr. Nobody. Uh, then you got Thu Erstad Rasmussen. He's like the rich kid that John Cena associates himself with or uses his money. You even have an appearance of Michael Rooker, Rooker, Rucker, or whatever you want to call it. He's in here too. He plays uh, Dom's dad, his buddy when they were on the pit crew. Anyways, Lucas Black, which was amazing to see, and Sean Moss, or Shan, whatever, Chad Moss, two guys from Tokyo Drift. So those two, the main actor who replaced Paul Walker and shit for that part, and then you've seen Dom show up at the end. Anyways, he's in it. They all tied it together. Let's just say that. Okay, guys, so it came out this year. It's about two hours and... 23 minutes but it's actually two hours and 10 there is a post credit scene that you see there at the end with uh jason statham uh connecting with han i'll just say that you know charlie's character guys she ends up getting uh busted out of jail and kind of used to work with john cena's character and there's no secret john cena's character is related to dom they're brothers okay loved the way they tie things together okay is it the greatest thing you'll ever see? Hell no. I'll tell you guys right now. If you're expecting a masterpiece, if you went into any of these films, especially after Fast Five, thinking you're going to get a masterpiece that is well written and executed, you're fucking wrong. Sorry, pardon the French. Okay, guys. Uh, overall, I liked it. I went in with low expectations because everybody's been shitting on this film that it's the worst one. It's this, it's that. In my personal opinion... I think the last one's the worst one. This one is not bad, okay? Yes, are the action scenes over the top? Hell yeah. Whatever you guys have been told and other people have been chirping about, yes, over the top. But come on, did you expect anything else? It had good flow in it. I wasn't bored. It was Like I said, it was only two hours and ten minutes. Um, the introduction of John Cena's character, he comes in about 20-something minutes into the film, guys, and... We get introduced and that kind of set Dom on a flashback sequence of uh, the last time he's seen his brother, which was pretty cool that he's, he blamed his brother for his father's death. Meanwhile, we kind of find out a twist near the end 
We learn the truth from John Cena because John Cena snaps at him at one point when he ends up getting captured and then gets let go or re rescued, supposedly. It's a setup because he needed this girl who, you know, is the DNA, the key in order to put these two things together. It's going to be the end of the world. We've seen the shit story before, guys, okay? Rich Kid turns on John Cena. And, of course, John Cena ends up helping his brother, his sister, and the team and stuff to kind of foil what's going on because he gets backstabbed and then he's on the run. He gives him his car. You know what? That's the least I can do for blaming you for, you know, their dad's death. I'll give you a 10-second car. And at the end of the film, a blue car pulls up, whether it's uh, Paul Walker. We don't see because he's passed away. You know, God rest his soul. Um, that shows up to the barbecue that everybody pretty much shows up. And it that's who I'm thinking they're insinuating. Maybe they're going to get one of Paul Walker's uh, brothers to kind of step in and kind of, you know, say that maybe you got a little bit of a different look because they're still making two movies, right? The ridiculous scene, which I totally, ooh, I was cringing. Fucking Pontiac Fiero with rockets there going into space, trying to take out a satellite, and they're wearing fucking diver's suits from fucking the 20s, for God's sakes. And you think that's going to last up in space? Ridiculous. Yeah, they didn't end up going and turning on the magnet like they fucking wanted to, but they crashed right through. Just that alone, the explosion, they should have been decimated and end up getting found by... Uh, the International Space Station guys up there. He goes, you, do you believe I see a Pontiac Fiero up here? Yeah, you got your funny moments. They got that technology from the Tokyo Drift uh, uh, crew guys, Lucas uh, Black and stuff. It's funny how they introduced them. And, you know, quick little nods here and there. Han, the way they explain Han surviving that uh, Mr. Nobody Rus Russell, Kurt Russell's character kind of like helping him disappearing, faking his death. Which was kind of lame, but not lame at the same time. It's to be expected because how else are you going to have him in here? So, But I'm not too sure he's on the fly because of near the end in the post credit scenes with Jason Statham. Is he a spy? What's the story with him? Is he working with Mr. Nobody, which we only see in that little tape message there? I don't know. A lot of open ends. Jason Statham showing up at the end in the post credits three minutes after it's all over. It was kind of unique. John Cena, believe it or not... He did okay, you know, with what he was given and the, I guess, character he was supposed to play in it. The brother who scorned of how he was treated and he goes into this spy life and he wants basically to outdo his brother and live from underneath his shadows. And the way Dom blamed all this time and says he's dead. And to show that race he had and him losing, winning, Toretto, Dom winning. And his brother, he goes, you keep on driving. That's his way when he got out of jail to let him off the hook that he didn't kill him for what he did to his father, not knowing the truth at that time. But we learned that his father owed money. He, and the way he can make money is if he threw the race and he had his brother, Cena, cut the wires from at the front. And then that caused the accident that really went haywire and shit like that. So that you could see why the brothers hate each other. The part with Helen Marin was great. Uh... Jason Statham's mother. You guys don't know who she plays or who she is in the uh, fast fast world. Uh, it was cool how he went there to kind of ask her questions. Where can I find, you know, where would I be looking? Kind of get clues from her because she knows fucking everything in London, right? Because that's where John Cena apparently his base was based out of with Charlie Starr and shit. Um, yeah, to kind of find out that racing when she's driving and shit, the little kind of discussion they had was pretty cool. Um Oh, yeah, the other stupid moment is the one you see in the trailer, guys, when Dom's jumping right off the damn side of the cliff, catches that wire, and the way he launches himself and then lands or whatever. Doesn't land normally because it made it look like he landed perfectly and shit like that. Or Charlize with the drone picking up John Cena's car and flying off. You have to see the whole film in its entirety. Yes, when you see the trailer, you're like, what the hell am I watching? It's so dumb over the top. But as you watch it happen, it's not as bad. I didn't like hate it so much. Didn't love it, but it didn't bother me. Take me out of the film and say, what the hell are they doing here? You know, but yeah, you know, it had its touchy moments with uh, Dom and his kid. You even have Gal Gadot's character there kind of like uh, talking a little bit. It was cool how they tied everything, Han and everybody else and how Han, you know, she, he stayed in Tokyo in a sense and how he was discovered the fight scenes here and there were pretty cool. The race scenes are the race scenes. You've seen them one film. You've seen them in all of them. But it's not as bad as you think. I'll tell you guys right now. I was really surprised, you know. If you could tolerate Hobbs and Shaw and the rest of the Fast and the Furious films, 
you can tolerate this one. You know, the only like I said, there's only a couple scenes like clip scene you see in the trailer and them going to space that really kind of like, are you fucking serious? That magnetic thing with the car flipping right through uh, in the movie and all that shit. And no, he does not catch the fucking car. Pardon my language, guys. That's only in the trailer. It made it look like he caught the car and shit. No, no, no. The car ends up going inside the truck that they're driving and stuff. So you had your comedy moments here and there. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tyrese. Being Tyrese and like him with his little rant and stuff. So they kind of brought everything and it worked well. Okay, guys. Um, is it the greatest of all the films? Hell no. Is it a step down? Well, if the last one's a step down, this is just above that. So maybe you can still say it's a step down. Would I recommend all you guys to go check it out? Yeah, I'll tell you guys to check it out. If you're a fan of the franchise, if you enjoy big blockbuster explosions everywhere, kind of like a Michael Bay thing there with actions, car racing, and stupid crazy-ass stunts, with a decent fair amount of storytelling in between, you're going to like it, you know? Uh, are you going to die if you don't see this? No. If you haven't seen the other one or the last one or the other ones before that, you're not going to miss this one. But it was okay. Like, I enjoyed it. So if I enjoyed it, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So there you go, guys. That is my quick, spoiler-filled movie review on F9, The Fast Saga, starring Vin Diesel, Jordana Brewster, Tyrese Gibson, Charlize Theron, John Cena... And a whole bunch of other guys in it, too. Um, go check that out for yourself. Come back in the comment section. Let the king know. So uh, there you go, guys. Like, share, and subscribe to the Movie Throne. Check out my other content that I'll be posting weekly moving forward until the end of the year. So well, podcast is returning next week, guys. So next Saturday, October 2nd, you better be there because there is a downloadable digital Black Widow movie code up for grabs. And there's also going to be, I think, the following week, a Justice League. So I don't know if I got the order wrong or whatever. But there'll be two digital codes that I'll be giving up for grabs. I'll be kind of like flashing the DVD during the video. And if you guys, whoever sees it first, uses it, grabs it, it's all yours. You're welcome, Throne Nation. So there you go, guys. King's out of here. Going to go check out another movie or so myself. But uh, yeah, yeah. Sundays, you know where to find me. Reviews right here. Podcasts on Saturdays. And then if there's any unboxing videos or any other special types of videos that are going to be coming on here on the Movie Throne, it's going to be on Friday. So there you go. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's it. The rest of the week, King is off. He has other shit to do, like write and all this other crap. So until then, stay off my throne. And I'll see you guys next week or in this particular case, very soon. So take it easy. Be the hell good. <laughs>